Truly, God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together Psalm 73. The book of Psalms, 150 Psalms, is divided into five books. And Psalm 73 is the first in the third section, the middle section, book three of Psalms. This is not a psalm of David. Many of the psalms are psalms of David. But David appointed some singers in Jerusalem. Asaph was one of them. And this is a psalm of Asaph. And this psalm is Asaph's testimony. How it came to be that he was a lead singer in the worship and praise of God rather than being a businessman and making money for himself out in the world. And the theme of this psalm is simply that while in the short term those who do not honour God seem to do well, in the end they will fail. Let's read the psalm. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride serves as their necklace, violence covers them like a garment, their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than their heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here. The waters of a cup full are drained by them. And they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, These are the ungodly, who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence, for all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors as a dream when one awakes. So, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far off from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all your works. And may the Lord bless these words to us. The problem that Asaph had was that he tried to work things out for himself, just looking at what his eyes could see. And what he could see is that those who are proud, those who took advantage of their position, they seemed to do well. They gathered around their possessions, their friends, and they all worked together. And they were having a good time and no one was upsetting them. No one was strong enough to oppose them. And he was getting envious because his life was not like that. He had been brought up with a fear of God, 
to do the right thing. These people weren't concerned to do the right thing in any absolute moral sense. They were just concerned to do the right thing by themselves, regardless of what effect it had on others. But their life seemed to be at ease. They seemed to be healthy. They seemed to be wealthy. They seemed to be enjoying themselves. And they weren't concerned about God. Whereas Asaph had been brought up to be concerned about doing the right thing. At a young age, he had committed himself to God. But why wasn't he getting the blessings? Surely God should bless him, rather than these wicked people who had no time for God. Instead, he continually faced troubles of one kind or another as he walked God's way. The answer to his problem came when he drew near to the house of God. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. The point of their end is that they are only concerned with the things of this world, and the things of this world will be absolutely destroyed. So if the only stuff that you have is material stuff, and the only enjoyment you have is its temporary enjoyment, you find that it never satisfies, and it will all be taken away from you. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to destruction, as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors, as a dream when one awakes. So, Lord, when you awake, you will despise their image. They have the opportunity now, and they can live as it pleases them. But their security is in their possessions. There's no security of God. And because they have not made friends with God, when God rises himself to take their life, they will have no friends there. This is something that exercises the mind of the believer. My heart was grieved. I was vexed in my mind. I was foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. Asaph is feeling He has not lived up to his own standard. He has not lived up to the standard of God. His mind is always striving to know God better. And he continually fails at that. But there's a major difference between him and those who do not know God. And that is, nevertheless, I am continually with you. God has a relationship with Asaph. God holds him. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. It's not by works of righteousness that that I have done by which I'm saved. I struggle through this life with trouble after trouble after trouble. But the hope of the believer is that God is with us. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you receive me to glory. For what have I in heaven but you? And there is none on earth that I desire besides you. What is it that we love? If we love the things of this world, then we love something that will be destroyed, that will be taken away. That's why Jesus urged us to put our treasure in heaven, where there's no rust or moth or thief. And where our treasure is, our heart will be also. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. A man might gain the whole world but lose his soul. But a person may give the whole world and gain a relationship with God. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all your works.